You do, babe. <laughs> So today I am at Heidi Campgrounds, which is just north of Barrie, Ontario. We left the Allure Gorge Conservation Area and uh, had a beautiful time there. It really was an amazing trip. The people here at Heidi Campground are nice and uh, uh, we've had no problems so far. The, the lots are also empty as well, just like at the Allure Gorge. I guess it's not the season for RV. Uh, it, it is getting pretty cold uh, during the nights here and I can see why people might want to go down further south. Uh, during this time. This week we haven't had so much good luck with the weather. It's been mostly overcast and uh, heavy winds all week. Uh, heavy winds so much so that our, our RV is, is shaking and we're really uh, questioning if we should get some more stabilization on our RV. Uh, kidding aside, it's not that bad, but it's terrible for anything related to astrophotography. Um, the weatherman says that I'm supposed to get uh, spotted clear skies for tonight, so I'm going to take advantage of that because that might be the only opportunity I have this week to shoot the stars. And what I'm going to be using to shoot tonight is my SkyTracker Pro. This is my little Ioptron mount used to take pictures of the night sky with a small telescope or a DSLR with a nice lens. The lens that I plan on shooting tonight with is the Samyang uh, 14 millimeter. This shoots at f2.8 and it's a really good camera for nighttime photography. So yeah, we'll see where the night takes me and uh, hopefully I'm able to get some good data. Alright, so this is the setup for tonight. Uh, as you can see, we're at lot 182. This is uh, where we connect our, our power to our RV. Um, but I decided to use the cement here because uh, it seemed pretty level. I have the iOptron Sky Tracker Pro Polar Aligned, and uh, it is currently doing 25 second exposures uh, pointing at the night sky. I checked the weather again to see if my night was going to improve, and it looks like it is. Um, there was supposed to be some clouds uh, sprinkled in, but it looks like I'm going to have clear skies for the entire night with just uh, a bit of wispy clouds. I also saw that uh, I might have another opportunity on Saturday. Uh, we are packing up Sunday to leave uh, to another location, so that is going to be uh, a bit tight. Uh, but I would like to use that opportunity to try and get the Raza out here um, instead of the Sky Tracker. I do like using the Sky Tracker, but uh, the, the Raza is very new to me and uh, I'm still, still in the, uh, the honeymoon phase with it. So one thing about being at this uh, trailer park is they have brand new LED street lights. Uh, so this doesn't really help with my astro imaging. Uh, where I am is a Bortle 4 area, uh, but these street lights don't help too much. Looks like I have a bit of dew building up on my lens here. Uh, thankfully I do have uh, a lens warmer. I don't know why I haven't had it plugged in, but uh, I should plug that in right now and hopefully get this camera and hopefully get this lens back to optimal conditions. Okay, so I strapped on this dew heater. It seems to be working already. Uh, I can feel it's kind of warm, and uh, it looks like the dew is evaporating a bit. I'll probably let this sit for 20 minutes or so, and then come back out here and see if I can get more shots on the stars. The dew eventually faded, and I was able to spend a bit more time that night shooting up at the night sky. This is what I was able to capture.
Hey guys, it's Saturday here at Heidi Campgrounds and uh, it looks like we might have another chance of astrophotography tonight. Um, I'm going to set up at my same location as I did last time, uh, but this time I'm going to be using the Raza 8 inch to see if I can get some shots on the Pleiades. Before we get to any of that, let's have some sausages. Nice, perfectly done. And put that kid to bed. Step one complete, uh, roughly polar aligned. Uh, that'll happen once I actually do a polar alignment. Um, but it is uh, also half weighted and uh, level. So once it starts getting dark, I'll bring all my equipment out here, rebalance the telescope and uh, do a polar alignment. Then I should be set. After that, I'm gonna be pointing my telescope towards the Pleiades. And uh, I'm thinking about doing 30 to 60 second exposures because this is a pretty bright object. I mean, like I'm, I'm looking right directly at some stars. So I, I still want to pick up some of that faint detail, um, but I also don't want to blow out my image. So I'll try a few different exposures, but I'm, I'm thinking between 30 and 60 is going to be the sweet spot. Anyways, I'm going to wait for it to get a bit more dark and then I'll be back out here. One thing that I plan to do differently tonight than I did with uh, my other night where I did the Heart Nebula is I'm going to swap out the light pollution filter that I used uh, and just have what Celestron had baked into the telescope already uh, when it came to me. Um, the reason for that is because I'm at uh, a Bortle Foresight and I just want to try the difference. Uh, they usually say the best filter is no filter, so uh, yeah, let's go that route. Quick update, I am currently shooting the Bode's Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy. Um, I'm able to get both of those in frame and I'm doing them at 40 second exposures. I'm gonna try using this exposure later on in the night when I shoot the Pleiades, um, but right now that object isn't in view. Uh, I still have to wait probably about an hour or so. My main target for the night and uh, what I'll spend most of my time on is the Pleiades, uh, but until that becomes in view, I'll continue shooting these two galaxies uh, to see if I can get anything else. Oh, my lights are fading. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, so I'm streaming uh, my telescope's PC to my uh, laptop here using TeamViewer. And if I stretch this image here, you can see, oh, some satellites just crossed. Um, but we have Bose Galaxy, uh, the Cigar Galaxy, and some other markings over here as well. Uh, so that's a pretty good shot. Um, I've already captured 90 frames at 40 seconds, though some of these frames did suffer from um, high winds. All right, so let's move this to the Pleiades now. I did get some good time on uh, those galaxies, Bode's galaxy and the Cigar galaxy, as well as some other uh, things in there, but it is now time to move to the Pleiades. Pretty late in the evening, about 12.30. Uh, I should have another two or three hours or so um, before the night is done. And yeah, the Pleiades looks really good in the frame. It's a bit upside down right now, but uh, after some post-processing, I'll be able to fix that. Anyways, I'll continue taking some shots, and yeah.
beginning of a new day, seven o'clock in the morning here. I just finished taking my flat frames for the session, and uh, overall I think I was able to capture a lot of good data on the Pleiades and both of those galaxies. It was a long imaging session, and I made sure to spend nearly as much time on processing my final images. I took both images and processed them in PixInsight, and one thing that I've been doing differently in my past few images is using PixInsight's dynamic background extraction tool over the automatic background extraction tool. This process takes a bit more time to configure, but the results, in my opinion, are well worth it. Here is my final processed image of the galaxies I shot earlier in the night. And here is my image of the Pleiades. If you like my images and would like to see them in higher definition, check out my Astrobin profile. I upload all my celestial photography there.